third, we're looking at the very last lesson in our unit. And remember, the unit is entitled Simplicity, Finding Contentment in a Busy Life. It's lesson number six, entitled Uncomplicated Relationships, out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 through 12. And the point of the lesson is, let God's love drive how you relate to others. Now, I think for us to better understand this passage, we need to understand a little bit more about Thessalonica in the, in the letter here that Paul wrote. Thessalonica, of course, is a town in Greece, and there was a Greek statesman and an orator. His name was Demosthenes, and he wrote that uh, we keep prostitutes for pleasure, we keep mistresses for the day-to-day -day needs of the body, and we keep wives for the begetting of children and for the faithful, faithful guardianship of our homes. Okay, this is the culture of, of, uh, of Thessalonica. Now, now, 146 BC, the Grecian Empire fell to the Romans. And you think, well, maybe that changed uh, the lifestyle a little bit. But no, it really didn't. Seneca, who was a Roman philosopher, he said this, Women were married to be divorced and divorced to be married. And fashionable, fashionable ladies, fashionable women of that time, often identified their years by the names of their husbands. Like we know, like in Isaiah chapter six, it says in the year that King Uzziah died. You know that's how they marked time is by the the, the years that the kings did uh, various things. Well, fashionable ladies in Rome would mark uh, their years. Well, you know that was the second year I was married to so and so, or the third year I was married, and that's how they kept track of time. So in this area in the Roman Empire, we would call morality virtually non-existent. So this is the culture that the early Gentile converts to Christianity came out of. And so this helps us make more sense of what Paul is writing here. Now here in verse 3 in our, in our passage this week, it says it's God's will that you should be sanctified. What does that mean, sanctified? Well, that means set apart, dedicated, distinct, holy, uh, not like everyone else. All of those terms apply. So everyone else who's living this immoral lifestyle, it's God's will that they and us live a distinct, different lifestyle. And Paul goes on further to explain the distinction is that you should avoid sexual immorality. In verse 4, Paul continues and he says, each of you should learn to control your own body. Now just that little statement there says a lot, doesn't it? You need to learn. That means it doesn't come naturally. If you have to learn something, it's something you don't know. It doesn't come naturally. So you need to learn to do this. And you need to learn to do what? To control. This indicates discipline. This means you have to determine that you're going to do it. You have to make yourself do it. So it doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. It doesn't matter what kind of lifestyle you're in or came out of. It doesn't even matter what you think will feel good or what you think uh, is an innate urge. Keep it in the bounds of what God intended. And then in verse 5, Paul contrasts the way that Christians are to be against the pagan worldview of sex. He says, don't be passionate or don't have that passionate lust like the pagans do who don't even know God. Christians are to be sanctified. There's that word again, set apart, to be distinct, especially in this area of sexual ethics. All right, now in verse 6, he, he says, And in this manner, referring back to sexual sin, and in this manner, don't take advantage of a brother or sister. Don't exploit any emotional weaknesses for your gratification. The Lord will punish those who, um, who do this. Now, see, here's the thing. Being a child of God does not prevent one from being disciplined. Let's go on down to verse 7, contrasting again against that impure lifestyle, the one that they were called out of against a holy life. Get on down to verse 9, this love for one another, love one another. That first word, love, is not agape, it's not the agapao, it's that other word, the phileo. It's, it's a form of that word, the brotherly love. So you've been taught by God to love. He says for a little bit further down in the verse, and that is the agapao, that self-sacrificing others' best interest. So to me, it's interesting that he uses both words there uh, for that. And he says, you know how to do this. God has put this on your heart. You know how to do this, so do it even more. That reminds me of John 13, 35. That says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. 
And Paul goes on to encourage the Thessalonians to live quietly, to work with their own hands, and to mind their own business. This reminds me of what Paul wrote to another guy, to, Timothy, uh, to Titus, in chat, Titus chapter 2, verses 6 through 8, where he says, Similarly, encourage the young men to be self-controlled. In them set an example by doing what is good, teaching them to show integrity, uh, seriousness, and soundness of speech, that they cannot be condemned, so that those who oppose you may be put to shame because they have nothing bad to say about us. And that's basically what, uh, what Paul is saying here when he said, uh, uh, so that you may walk properly before outsiders and be dependent on no one. So people on the outside are looking and saying, these guys are living such lives of integrity, there's nothing we can complain uh, about them. So in a nutshell, our relationships with others should be marked by uh, being distinct, no sexual immorality. Similar to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3, that says, But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. So do your best to be above board, to be above suspicion. You know, Vice President Mike Pence has recently been ridiculed in the media for adhering to uh, what's been known as the Billy Graham rule, which is avoiding spending time alone with somebody of the opposite gender who's not your spouse. So regardless of your political stance, you know, you've just got to admire somebody that's in that high a position that has the ethics, that has the, the wherewithal to, 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 to take that kind of unpopular stand. So our relationships with others should be marked by distinction, all right, no sexual immorality, and also by loving, by loving others, living quietly, minding your own business so that others outside will respect you. So next week, we're looking at a new unit. It's entitled, How to Know God's Will. And, you know, that's probably something everybody in your class at one time or another, maybe even right now, have struggled with. How do I know what God's will is for my life? Well, we're going to be looking at that. It's going to take six weeks to, to completely unwrap that and, and to see how we can discover God's will. So don't forget to pray for your class, that they will discover God's will. And uh, you know the needs of your class. Pray specifically for them. Thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate you.